Right, let's continue this discussion now. Just before the uh, break, we were talking about the difference, particularly we're focusing here in Gauteng because this was a conference that was held trying to bridge that divide between the private schools and public schools. How can they work together to try and uh, bring up the education sector? Uh, Joan Pizzi is the chairperson of the Education Portfolio Committee in Gauteng. Dr. Tim Nuttall is the rector and executive head of St. Studian College. Uh, let's, let's move on to the, the issue of, of, of racism. Now, I'm going to start with you, Tim, because that, sure. of course, is, a, is an issue that is now affecting private schools. It, I, I mean, some of the horrific headlines that we read, um, whether it be the issue that happened at St. John's, um, that case created a lot of backlash um, in how schools deal with racist teachers and this old school of thought and the way people are, are, are getting away with it. Talk to me about this and your perception in private schooling. Right. Thanks, Leanne. So this is a critical issue for us uh, as, as independent schools contribute to nation building. And uh, I want to emphasize that whilst there are headlines, there's also a great amount of work that is being done by historically white independent schools uh, that, are, that is seriously addressing questions of identity, questions of belonging. So in the case of St. Stithians, we've had a transformation statement since 2009 and we, we reissued a statement this year and this matter has been publicly addressed. We have critical conversations. And for me, it's critical that we, we also work at a, a definition of racism so that we have a common understanding of what we're speaking about here. And for me, it's critical that racism is contextual, it's historical, it's linked to white people holding power in, uh, in, an, in a discriminatory manner. And the challenge for white leaders in independent schools, white teachers, white coaches, is to recognize that the way they act is experienced in a particular way by black students in our schools. Mm. And we're particularly proud at St. Stithians at our, uh, at our enrollment of black students. We're a transforming school. We have targets. And also at uh, training programs for our staff looking at conscious bias, um, unconscious bias, stereotyping. And the, the, the capacity of South Africans to stereotype in a negative way because the shadow of apartheid is long and deep and it hangs over us and we yeah. need to work actively against that. And it certainly does. And I mean, you'll, you'll listen to stories and accounts of black pupils in private schools. And it is very difficult for them to fit into this white system, whether it be hair, whether it be cultures, whether it be uh, language barriers, accents, uh, uh, sporting uh, terms. I mean, they're, they're very, very different complaints and, uh, and things that, that people speak out about. How do you deal with them? I mean, and, and particularly some of the programs or incidences that you've had at St. Stilians. Right. So it was great. Yesterday at the summit, I took our, our head students, uh, Tula Sarobe and, and Gabriela Fedetta, uh, because we have a girls' college and a boys' college as separate schools. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that they emphasized in their presentation was the value of critical conversations and, and crucially involving students in setting policies um, around hair, around, um, around issues of identity. And uh, it is interesting that when one involves the students in today's world, as is happening in universities, uh, the, the issues of identity are around race, uh, they're around class, they're around sexuality. So there's a very, a very vibrant debate going on within our schools around identity and belonging. Yeah. I, w I also want to ask the department because um, from Gauteng, I remember sitting here with the MEC at yes. the time when it was the, the whole story of the hair, of hair and yeah. afros and, yeah. and something that we thought we may have gotten over mm. and then more incidences came up where uh, teachers were being absolutely racist towards mm. Mm. young black girls whose hair looked absolutely beautiful yeah. and yet she was criticizing them. Now, I want to know how schools are getting away with this and how they've managed to get away with this for so long. Why has this not been analyzed? And, and the, the different terms and rules of schools get submitted to you. Surely you read over them and then it's, it's okay. Look, Len, uh, what we had a conversation with the, the MEC on was why are the schools not being monitored? Yeah. Uh, do we have capacity as government to monitor uh, the schools? And the answer was that yes, we have a challenge of capacity. But one of the key things that uh, we, said, we said we must deal with is to make sure that, because we don't have a separate department of education for private school, we have one department that is led by MSC Lisufi, and that department is the one that must oversee all the schools in our province, including private sector. Now, the issue is, 
some of the schools manipulate policies. Some of the schools, when mm. you leave, your, you drop your child at the gate and your child goes into the school. Yeah. And most of these kids are t have been told, you can't say this at home. It's the culture of the school. And that we feel it, uh, it's something that uh, we need to do away with. Yeah. Hence this consultative summit, to deal deep and dig deep around these questions of racism. Because black children in particular are subjected to many, many challenges by people who have actually inherited the culture of hatred, mm -hmm. who have uh, inherited a culture of uh, thinking that they are super than the other, and we believe that uh, these things must be confronted. One of the things that emerged yesterday, you, lo you look at the St. John uh, issue, which was a massive, massive issue. We hold the department accountable to say, you can't sit back and watch uh, this school going on like that. We must find a way of dealing with some of these challenges. And yesterday, the chairperson of council presented their 15-point uh, plan on how they've shifted since when MEC Panyazal Yusuf has engaged with them. And we are happy with the plan. And we want to monitor that plan, the implementation of that. But we have also spoken to the body where these schools are affiliated to, NAISA, to say NAISA must come on board, preach this issue, and make sure that uh, private schools understand that uh, racism is unconstitutional in yeah, this country. Yeah, yeah. And those that are found to be practicing racism, particularly subjecting black and African children in particular to such issues, then those particular people must not belong to the sector. We must remove them like... Uh, what happened in St. John. Yeah, I, I must say it was, it was also yeah. uh, when you said that uh, pri uh, independent schools yes. and public schools all fall under the same department. Yes. Sometimes we forget that That's because correct. it doesn't look like that. Yeah. They look like two completely different Indeed. schooling systems. Indeed. You have got schools that are these, these private schools that yeah. are almost run independently. Now, I want to ask you from St. Vivian's point of yes. view, and I mean, when you saw what was happening all the way back to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to Pretoria Girls High, and yeah. uh, again, the St. John's issue, we keep on bringing that mm. up, and there are many other schools mm. that, are, that we may not be bringing examples of, but these are, I suppose, the big ones that have been in the headlines. What did you at private schools, did you guys jump up and say, this is unacceptable, we're having a meeting right now? What did you say? How did you speak out against the, the defense of what was going on at St. John's by its own yes. principle. I think it's critical that we don't defend the indefensible, uh, that we take a strong stand, um, and that we, we really do look inwards into our own practices and, uh, and reflect on them. I want to emphasize, too, that independent schools uh, do not exist in their own universe. We register with the state. Uh, we, com we, we need to comply with all the major policies, but what defines the independence is that there is a separate governing body uh, where, where local choices can be made, if you like, about school character and, and emphasis. And obviously that's the market of, the, of uh, independent schools. And one of the points I made in my presentation yesterday is that uh, I think we need, to, we need to celebrate a rich ecosystem that, uh, that exists here in Gauteng, yeah. where one in four uh, schools are independent uh, in, in Gauteng province, and one in 10 students attend independent schools. So it's a rich ecosystem that is accountable to the constitution. It's accountable uh, to the, the overall um, need to educate citizens of our land. Yeah. And that should be the benchmark for what uh, independent schools are doing alongside academic excellence, sporting, cultural excellence, which is the, the holistic education that certainly the high fee uh, independent schools, yeah. that the, the benchmark and the, and the, the beacon that they hold out. Yeah. as part of this ecosystem. Could, could private schools not foresee that these incidences were going to happen? I mean, this is an, uh, it's an evolving system, and yet it still does favor um, the white pupil. I mean, we look at schools, many of them are still dominated by white teachers, mm -hmm. the white education system, mm -hmm. uh, and now you've got black pupils coming in that have to fit into it. It's not changing to accommodate, but they must accommodate to fit into that. Mm -hmm. Surely you could have foreseen that these incidences were going to happen. There are two points I want to make there. The one is that uh, a school is, uh, in a way, a mirror of society. And uh, students bring their, their family experiences into school. Staff members obviously have their own, uh, their own history and their own baggage. 
And so at one level, we need to be realistic of that, that mm. schools reflect society, but they also need to be agents of change. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we're at a tipping point, uh, certainly in, in, at St. Stithians, and I don't represent the whole independent school sector, where we, we're developing a whole new culture that is a South African culture as opposed to a white-dominated culture. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just to add, uh, yesterday we, we got one a good quotation from uh, one learner. Uh, I can't remember the school where the child came from. But this child said to us that all the schools, particularly the private schools, they must not govern without understanding the culture where these kids are coming from. Absolutely. And I think we need to make sure that policy deals with that. Yeah. There's religious issues, there's language issues, and I think private sector yesterday agreed with us that these things we must look into them, we must deal with them. Racism has no space, particularly in Gauteng. Mm -hmm. We're not going to tolerate that. Those that are going to be found practicing that, we're going to punish them, unfortunately. It's 8 o'clock here on the program. I've never done this before, but I'm going to now. I'm just going to ask my, my producers, would it be possible to just ask my guests to stay uh, after the news? I, all I want to do is wrap up. <laughs> I'm, I'm, being, I'm being told it's okay, if that's fine with you. Sure. I really feel we need to talk about sure. the incidences of corporal punishment by teachers on pupils as yes. well and discipline issues. So if we can incorporate that, thank you so much to everyone for allowing that. But Palessa, I know we've got to get the news now, and we'll just quickly come back and wrap up this conversation. Palessa.